Today I'm remaking these easy to operate bike wall hangers. So let me show you how they work and then how you can make them too. After spending way too long describing the mechanism to you on camera, I decided to go with an abridged version. The short of it is that you have two handholds, corks in this case. If you pull the one that is higher, the state of the holder changes. Open, closed. You get the picture. Let's fast forward through this so I can show you how to make one from scrap pieces and a bit of hardware. Wait, yes, I forgot. I also filmed how I took down the old holder. Yeah, very entertaining. I would even go as far as to call it a downer. Taking the old one down... The reason for that is that I wanted to be more flexible. The old ones were pretty much locked in place. The new ones can be put wherever you need them, determined by where your bike lands on the wall. Seriously, don't throw it. Now, finally, that is what you need. A back piece. This is where the mechanism will be mounted. Three blocks. The size is pretty flexible, except that they should be at least as high as your tire, that is, the outer circumference of the wheel minus the inner circumference where the spokes begin. It'll make sense. Then there's the bar that will hold it in place. You need a length that covers the two vertical blocks. On the first design I used steel rods taken from old printer cartridges. But the aluminium pipe I use now should do the trick just as well and is a lot easier to work with. Then three eyelets. And a piece of plastic pipe that the rod fits into with some room to spare. Two of the eyelets need to fit around the plastic pipe, so I make them fit. Spoiler alert, we'll also need string, a few more eyelets and another piece of wood later. Meanwhile, or rather afterwards since I can only do one thing at a time, I screw the T-pieces together and then all the wood blocks to the backer. Something I do pre-trill for are the eyelets and I place the two ones that accept the pipe on the T. The rod is helpful in driving them in before or after you add a through hole near one end. To deburr the outside I use a countersink bit. On the inside I use a trill bit to slice away any burr. Now we add a wooden bar that juts out from the wall to make the holder easier to operate. A thin slat that gets three eyelets. Two of them go near one end, a little bit apart, while the other needs to go near the end of the pipe when the slat is held on top of the flat part of the T. On a piece as thin as this I also pre-trill and screw it in place. Now let's play some string. I mean, the string comes into play. It is hard to explain how much you need, so if you want to keep your string consumption low, I recommend you keep watching first. If you just go haywire with a string, you need to keep watching as well. The rod needs to be at the center of the string. To keep it there, I found two methods. For the first method, you make a thick knot near the center and thread it rather awkwardly so that the knot would be at the inside of the aluminium pipe. Another way is to just thread it through and make a knot around the pipe. Here's how to thread this thing up. Take one end of the string and put it through the plastic pipe from the tire side. Also, notice how I already have a third eyelet in place, which is not the best idea. More on that later. Insert the rod into the pipe with a knot going in first. Then both strings go through the first small eyelet near the pipe as well as the first one near the front. Then only one goes through the final eyelet, which helps a lot in keeping them from tangling. And that's almost it. You can test the mechanism now. Pulling the ends will move the rod, but for this to work we need a third eyelet to catch the bar. I had to move mine because I could not wait to put it in earlier. Look where your bar aims at when you make it shoot into the closed position and place your eyelet there. You can also fine tune things by modifying the direction and depth of your three eyelets. Keep in mind that you should hold the holder against the wall while testing it because the rod will move differently if it's laying flat on its back. Cut the string so that you end up with two ends that are a hand breadth apart in one position and just the opposite in another. Add two weights or grips to each 
like corks or washers and you are done. All that's left to do is to place the holder flush with where the standing bike touches the wall. I hope you enjoyed this project even though it's a little less weird than my usual. You can find an instructable with more details on my homepage as well as all the other stuff that I've made. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to be inspired. Today I'm redoing these pulley powered... no, this. Today... Today I'm going to redo these easy to use wall hangers for bikes. Let me show you how... Today I'm going to make these... Today I'm waiting for the car to pass by. Okay. Big down I go.